This felt surreal three minutes ago before that musical tribute. It really does now. So, fellow trustees, Bishop Ambera, distinguished guests, parents, families, and most importantly, members of the class of 2011, welcome to this auspicious moment in the life of the University of Scranton and in your lives, and one that I think we share together with a quality of bitter sweetness. It's an incredible privilege to be here with you today. The assembly in this arena epitomizes Scranton's pride, passion, and promise. The pride today especially belongs to parents and families. Your love for your daughters and sons is palpable and contagious. You are rightly exuberant in celebrating their success today. How wonderfully you have raised them and nurtured them down the path that leads to this commencement. For more than 20 years, these graduates have been graced by your love. And now, today, look what your love has done. Parents and families, Thank you for sharing these remarkable women and men with the University of Scranton. And members of the class of 2011, please take a moment now to stand and acknowledge your first best teachers, the people who have made all this possible. My friends in the class of 2011, your education here at Scranton has introduced you to very high ideals and aspirations. Yours is a formation that elicits great desires, desires that direct your days and works to the greater glory of God and the well-being of humankind. Today, your class is enhanced by the addition of three members whom we've honored with doctorates, honoris causa. These three exemplary individuals have led lives that clearly mirror qualities that have been prized by Jesuit educators since the 16th century. Ignatius Loyola and the first Jesuits gave pride of place in their work to what they called the intellectual apostolate. Frida Adler has devoted her life to this work. Throughout her distinguished career, she has shaped her academic discipline, as well as the lives and careers of her students, including three University of Scranton professors. She was among the first women in the United States to earn a PhD in sociology with an emphasis in criminology, and she has been a pioneer ever since pushing the limits of her discipline with a special regard for the promotion of justice. Early Jesuits also encouraged their companions and collaborators to be outwardly focused, always aware of the needs of others around them. Carl Keener epitomizes this Ignatian attribute. His outstanding service to his alma mater is matched by his generosity to others around the world in need of assistance. I have had the privilege of witnessing firsthand the work that Carl has done, not only here in Scranton as chair of the Board of Trustees, but also in his native Florida, Haiti, and mission sponsored by the Knights of Malta. Under Carl's leadership as board chair, the uni university benefited from his sagacity and his entrepreneurial spirit, embarking on some of the most substantial projects in our history. Members of the class of 2011, if there is any one single person mostly responsible for the sweet sound of construction that was the theme song of your years here, it is Carl Keener. As you know, Jesuits early on 
embraced the apostolate of education, understanding intuitively that there is nothing like a school when it comes to shaping souls. Monsignor Andy Martin is a shaper of souls. Catholic secondary education in his native New Jersey has no greater champion. For over a quarter century, Andy served as principal and then as president of Camden Catholic High School, my alma mater. And on a personal note, I had the honor of serving as board chair at Camden Catholic. I can attest that during Andy's years, he left his mark not only on the institution, but on thousands of individuals who benefited from his pastoral care, his commitment to excellence, and his lived conviction that Catholic education should always be accessible and affordable. My friends in the class of 2011, as you steer the course of your lives, let people such as Frida, Carl, and Andy be an ever-fixed mark and a measure of your success. Now, members of the class of 2011, coincident with your arrival here four years ago, the Jesuits around the world experienced a change in leadership and a new direction when Father Adolfo Nicolás was elected superior of the Worldwide Society of Jesus. In this role, he has brought great energy and enthusiasm to Jesuits and their colleagues, and he is particularly committed to the work of higher education. Last spring, Dr. Bailey and I had the privilege of participating in a gathering of Jesuit leaders from around the world held in Mexico City, the first ever gathering of every Jesuit university president in the world. In his keynote address, Father General displayed a keen sense of contemporary culture, noting that he is the first Jesuit general to use email and surf the web. In doing the latter, he is far more tech savvy than I am. As he looks out on our world and reads the signs of the times, he sees both the potential and the pitfalls of your generation. He rightly worries for you about what he terms the globalization of superficiality. By that phrase, he means a willingness to settle for snappy answers to complicated questions. As an antidote, he urges young people like yourselves to let the gritty reality of this world into your lives so you can learn to feel it Think about it critically, respond to its suffering, and engage it constructively. When I heard his speech in Mexico City, my mind went quickly to you, the students of the University of Scranton. And as I sat there, I was filled with pride and filled with confidence on account of my experience with you and on account of the education you have received here. My friends, you are more than ready to meet that challenge. As women and men educated at the University of Scranton, I know that you are able to reach down deep and discover there the dearest freshness. Let me expand on my experience of you these past four years. While I acknowledge that we at Scranton are not immune to the globalization of superficiality, there is something about you and something about this place that defies the predicament in which we find ourselves. In short, this community, and you especially, are unapologetically authentic, and you are blessed with a near unique capacity to start and to sustain friendships. Let me first address your authenticity, the reality of you that I have come to love in my years at Scranton. From the day your class arrived, for example, you have exhibited 
a fresh-faced openness and a genuine warmth. I have rarely seen a class so ready to embrace one another and to embrace the university. You brought with you an unbridled energy. Now, let me be the first to say, as a resident of GLM right at the corner of Mulberry and Quincy, who was regularly on the early morning receiving end of your unbridled energy, <laughs> that it has its downsides. In a weird way, though, I will miss my window onto the wacky world of Mulberry Street as I watched and more frequently heard you make your way home from so many, let's call them, celebrations. <laughs> and while you weren't always at your best in the wee hours, you sure as heck were real. No pretense, no posing, good college friends enjoying each other's company. I will also never forget your engagement with the real world around you and celebrations such as the 2008 presidential election, when you voted in record numbers, and how the campus erupted upon the announcement of the results. Then there was the 2009 Phillies-Yankees World Series, <laughs> the equivalent of civil war at the University of Scranton. As a native of the Delaware Valley, I was disappointed in the outcome but boy, was I happy when game six ended. Not as happy as public safety, but happy. Now, I don't mean to suggest that your authenticity and your talent for friendship only manifested itself in the best of times. On the contrary, you stretched and struggled together in your years at Scranton. While doing so, you learned the enduring lesson that friendship is hard work. There is nothing easy, as you now know, about engaging authentically with another, really engaging, as you have done. While you certainly leverage technology to stay in touch, tweeting and linking in and all those postings on you face or whatever you call it, It was obvious to me and to so many others in day-by-day -day ways, in real time, that you let one another into your lives. And that, my friends, takes a willingness to be vulnerable. One of my greatest pleasures in my years here was teaching some of you in an experience that I am sure my faculty colleagues would find familiar. I was genuinely moved again and again by your intellectual honesty and your ability to do a rare thing, a thing most people find very difficult. In your authenticity, you were willing to admit what you didn't know. And that's where learning begins. Three of the most liberating words in the English language are, I don't know. And you were vulnerable enough to admit that. That too speaks of your openness, your openness to embrace what's different, what's new, what's foreign and unfamiliar. So many of you did this kind of embracing in the thousands of hours of service to which you committed yourself. Scranton has an unwavering conviction that such service is integral to your Jesuit education. You went across the city, the nation, and the globe with open hands and open minds and you returned with broken hearts. As a result, you will never be the same, 
nor will you ever imagine your place in the world as you once did. Imagining one's place in the world is another critical aspect of your Jesuit education. For St. Ignatius Loyola, discovering the power of imagination, especially in the context of prayer, was akin to discovering spiritual dynamite. By using his imagination, he equivalently blew the lid off of old ways of conceiving God and God's work in the world. Imagination enabled him to feel God's love in his own life and in the life of the church and the life of the world. In his spiritual exercises, the foundational expression of Ignatian spirituality, imagination is the tool that equips and inspires us to discern the work God most wants us to do. In your years at Scranton, you have been equipped and inspired this way. Our incomparable faculty, so devoted to your success, has labored tirelessly to call out the best in you. They are learned liberators, sharing with you their wisdom and expertise so that you might be freed from constraining boxes of thought. Others on campus, administrators, the staff, coaches, moderators, mentors, shared in this sacred work. My friends, always remember the debt of gratitude that you owe them. And I'm convinced that the longer and further you go from our campus, this gratitude will deepen all the more. It's hard, if not impossible today, with so many conflicting emotions, to estimate the changes worked in you these past four years. Only time and distance will provide that perspective. But what can you know today, poised as you are to receive a Scranton degree? You know now that today you fully inherit a nearly 500-year-old spiritual and educational tradition, a tradition that sets you apart and sets you on fire. Phrases such as Cora Personalis and Magis are more than rhetorical flourishes for you now. As women and men educated in the Jesuit tradition, you know God's unconditional love for you in your uniqueness. You understand that the right response to such unconditional love is profound gratitude. Grateful for all that God has done for you, you respond by striving for God's greater glory. Your education at Scranton has been about so much more than the accumulation of information. In fact, the word education as we commonly use it doesn't really capture what has happened for you on this sacred ground. Your time here has been formative, transformative. A word inscribed on the statue of St. Ignatius on campus expresses it best. Metanoia. Your time at Scranton has been a time of turning, turning toward new ideas, new methodologies, new paradigms, and most importantly, new people. The people who will be your friends for the rest of your lives. Take time today to count the ways in which you are different than you were four years ago. Take stock of the new you, the person who has been shaped in ways both subtle and dramatic, the person who is now ready to welcome what's to come. Eight years ago, I arrived here as an English professor. Let me end where I began by sharing a favorite poem that aptly expresses my deep admiration for you and my gratitude for all that you've done for one another and for the university. It's by a favorite poet, Mary Oliver. 
and it's entitled, What is the Greatest Gift? What is the greatest gift? Could it be the world itself, the oceans, the meadowlark, the patience of the trees in the wind? Could it be love with its sweet clamor of passion? No. Something else, something else entirely holds me in thrall when I think of you. That you have lives that I wonder about more than I wonder about my own. That you have lives courteous and intelligent that I wonder about more than I wonder about my own. That you have souls, your own, no one else's, that I wonder about more than I wonder about my own. So that I find my soul clapping its hands for yours more than my own. My friends, today my soul is clapping its hands for you and always will. Thank you. What I would like to do, though, is call back to the podium Father Pilars to offer some closing remarks. Just a very few words before we go. Words, most importantly, again, to the graduates of the class of 2011. Thanks, first, for putting up with constant construction for the past four years. You really ought to be wearing hard hats instead of graduation caps today. But maybe all the building happening around you is an apt metaphor for what's been happening inside you, inside your hearts and minds. Just as the campus has changed for the better, you have been changed here, changed utterly, we hope. The assumptions you brought with you have been upended and unpacked during your years at Scranton. Our faculty, our staff, have ignited a unique spark in you. That unique spark is the magic of Scranton, isn't it? And it's hard to explain to outsiders, right? Or as the character Phyllis says to a new Dunder Mifflin employee, you have a lot to learn about this town, sweetie. <laughs> what have you learned in this town? It will take you a lifetime to really understand. But my friends, know this now. You have been well loved. Loved by your families who provided this for you. Loved by faculty and staff who prompted and prodded you to greatness, loved by friends who are now fully yours for the rest of your lives. Cherish and keep your Scranton friends. As my college president told my class at graduation exactly 30 years ago today, don't waste love. Don't waste love. Spend your love lavishly on the friends you have made at Scranton. Love all that you have learned here. Love the university that is now yours. Come back often 
and catch us up on your lives. Tell the president how to run the place. <laughs> Wherever life takes you, tell the people you meet about the graces given and received on the sacred ground you have shared, the University of Scranton. Not where you breathe, but where you love, you live. No matter where you breathe, part of you will always love and live at the University of Scranton. God bless you. God bless Catholic and Jesuit higher education. And God bless the University of Scranton. <laughs>